Research strategies are often divided into inductive and deductive approaches. Let's take a look at what these two approaches are and also let's talk about a third approach called abductive research. Inductive and deductive approaches relate to how we link our data with our theory. So we can see here this figure from Baccarat. There are different levels of abstraction. There's the abstraction of, of proposition and then there's the abstraction of hypothesis. And we go up and down, we have high level abstraction, the concepts, low level abstraction, the data. So how do we link the theory and the data? My example is uh, a paper by Deep House, and this is a quantitative study. They look at whether firms should differentiate and if differentiation affects performance. The argument for differentiation is that if you differentiate, if you are deviant strategically from your competitors, then you will be more profitable because there's less competition. But the counter argument is that if you are too different from your competitors, then uh, you are a weird company and no one wants to buy from you in a nutshell. Deep House has data from banks. The data have two variables that are relevant for us. One is return on assets, which is a very common performance measure. Another one is what they call strategic deviation, which is calculated by comparing the bank's asset profile against the asset profile of a typical bank in the industry. And they have 159 banks. They found that the variables are negatively correlated. So when one goes up, the other one goes down. And then they have this LRV theory that a firm with a different strategy benefits less because benefits because it faces less competition and so on. And uh, firms that conform the strategies of others it have many similar competitors that limit performance and so on. So then the question is that we have two variables here that are negatively correlated, the strategic deviation and performance. And then we have a theory that firms uh, should be different. So how do we link the theory and the data? And this is where the inductive and deductive approaches come into play. To understand inductive and deductive research strategies or research approaches, we need to understand a bit about logic first. So what is inductive logic, what is deductive logic, and then what is abductive logic? The inductive and deductive reasoning basically work with a major premise, minor premise, and a conclusion. And one of these is unknown and is inferred from the data. And if we have deductive reasoning, then we would know that all men are mortal, and we would know that Socrates is a man, and then we would infer deductively that Socrates is mortal. So we have major premise, we have minor premise, and we have conclusion. If major premise and minor premise are both true, then the conclusion is also always true. So uh, this holds, uh, the, the truth value of the claim is always the same. How it applies to research is that we first assume the major premise. So that might be our theory. So this is commonly used in theory testing research. We assume that all men are mortal. We observe that Socrates is a man. And we observe perhaps that Socrates is not mortal. Then we would infer that the major premise is actually incorrect. So you can invalidate claims by showing that your conclusion does not correspond with your data. So this is the deductive reasoning. We start with minor, major premise and minor premise, and then we infer what we should observe. Inductive reasoning is different. So from inductive reasoning, we observe the minor premise, we observe the conclusion, and then we infer the major premise. So if we observe that Socrates is a man, we observe that Socrates is mortal, then we infer the rule that all men are mortal. And this is a bit problematic because we cannot generally prove that all men are mortal. It might be that there is an immortal man, which we have never seen. The fact that we have only seen white swan is, uh, in Europe is commonly used as an example. So even if you have ne never seen a black swan, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. They in fact do. In Australia, there are black swan and I've seen them. So the problem of induction is that whenever we generalize from 
uh, one or a smaller number of observations to the general rule, there's always a possibility that somewhere there is an instance where the rule doesn't apply that we haven't just seen. Then we have abductive reasoning. The idea of abductive reasoning is that we observe that Socrates is mortal, we know that all men are mortal, and then we start thinking what might explain that Socrates is mortal, and the best explanation might be that Socrates is a man. We don't know whether that's the correct explanation, but that's a reasonable explanation. All right, so how does inductive, deductive and abductive logic then link to research? Let's take a look at this figure which comes from Ketokivi's book, which he adopted from Baccarat. So he has uh, the idea that we have these theoretical concepts and then we have propositions, the theoretical statements linking the, uh, the, uh, the concepts. Then we have hypotheses which link empirical concepts. So empirical concept is actually something that we could observe. So for example, if theoretical concept is performance, then empirical concept might be return on assets, ROA. And then we have some measurement result. And measurement result is specific to some data. And then we have some statistical association that we calculate from those data. So uh, if we do inductively, then uh, we would go from data up to theory. So we observe something in our data, then we generalize to the law of theory. So let's say we observe that strategy deviation and uh, ROA are negatively correlated, then we infer that uh, differentiation actually doesn't pay off, for example. In deductive research, we do the opposite. So we start deriving that if a strategy deviation is actually or differentiation is related to profit uh, to performance, then strategic deviation should correlate with ROA, so that's the hypothesis, and then we uh, do some kind of measurement result which uh, ten then tests the original uh, proposition here. The book talks about three types of studies. It talks about um, theory testing research, which is mostly quantitative, might be observational, experimental, and it talks about inductive case research. So inductive case research is more theory building, so you observe something in a limited number of cases, and then you theorize that the same phenomenon might apply to multiple different cases. So you go from uh, a few individual cases to uh, a more general theory. And then you have interpretive research, which follows the abductive logic. So you ask for more questions like, what might explain? So what might explain why a firm failed, for example? So instead of identifying patterns like you do in inductive case study, you look for explanations in this abductive or more interpretive research. Let's take a look at this example of DPAS paper again and how they apply the deductive approach, the theory testing approach. And I like the paper because it presents uh, both a proposition and a statistical hypothesis in the same paper. So typically you would just have the, the, the proposition or you would have the hypothesis, but this has both. So their proposition is that less strategic similarity increases performance. And that is the level of the theory. And then they have a, a hypothesis, which is a statistical hypothesis that they test, that there's a positive relationship between strategy deviation and relative ROA. And then they have some kind of calculation, so they test with data. So how does this really uh, then, then play together. The idea is that they have this, this proposition first, which is a level of the theory, and then they have a statistical hypothesis, which is level of the data, and then, then you go and test it. So the idea is that you have some kind of a theoretical claim here, and then you have observable consequences. So this Theoretical hypothesis is the proposition and then this statistical hypothesis is the observable consequence. The idea is that if the theoretical proposition holds, then we should observe something in our data. Of course, we need a lot of auxiliary hypothesis as well. So we have to assume, for example, that return on assets is a valid measure of performance in this sample. We have to assume that the strategic deviation variable uh, captures the strategic similarity concept well enough to be uh, useful as a measure and so on. And then uh, we have the statistical hypothesis here. If we don't observe support for that hypothesis in our data, 
then we would conclude that the original hypothesis, or original proposition is incorrect. And if we observe the support for the statistical hypothesis that there's this positive relationship between uh, strict deviation and relative ROA, then we infer that the theory might be correct. And this is, an, this is a very common strategy for quantitative research. Here's an example uh, from the book. They uh, look at religious values and uh, they have a theory here, up here, and then they derive multiple hypotheses based on the theory. If the theory is correct, then they should observe support for this hypothesis using the quantitative data that they collect. Inductive studies work a bit differently. So here's the example from the book. So in an inductive study, you might observe a few cases, you might observe uh, and explain what is going on, like what kind of causal processes are going on in those cases, and then you would generalize to a, a broader theory. So here's an example of uh, a study of cross-boundary teams in hospitals, and uh, when uh, you interview and observe, then you can make some kind of a theory of what's going on in the, in the hospital, and then you might generalize that this might work in other similar organizations. Okay, to uh, summarize, in deductive research, we typically ask these kind of like yes or no questions. Does implementing a flexible work schedule increase employee productivity? What is the relation between leadership style and team performance? Is it positive or negative? And we often use quantitative designs where we start with a theory, then we derive a hypothesis, a statistical hypothesis, we test the statistical hypothesis, and then we uh, make a call whether the study supports the, uh, the theory or not. In inductive studies, we typically find, try to identify patterns of behavior, patterns of outcomes and, and, and inputs in a smaller number of cases, firms, teams, individuals. And then we build a more general theory based on those a few smaller number of cases. Then in abductive research, we might go and, and look for an unusual outcome and start looking for what might explain that outcome. This is often uh, used in, in qualitative studies and it's more of an interpretive kind of qualitative research strategy.